So today we are starting lecture five on helicopter dynamics and this lecture is going to be on harmonic motion, which is one of the fundamental aspects of structural dynamics. And again, I'm Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. Now, if we look at typical motion of a spring mass system, so here you have a mass M suspended by a spring K. And this motion is going to look like this particular sinusoid here. And here I have plotted X of T versus T. So this is the displacement with respect to time. The maximum value would be A and the time period of this motion is given by tau. So essentially one of the aspects of harmonic motion is that this motion repeats after each time period tau. So we see that if the mass is pulled from its position and released, the motion xt is going to be periodic. Now, how can we get this particular profile? One way would be that if we place a light source on this mass, its motion could be recorded on a light sensitive film strip, which is made to move past it at a constant speed. And this is one of the ways we can perform an experiment to get the typical harmonic motion. So let us introduce some more variables. We saw that tau is the period of revolution, and this is the time period after which this motion repeats. So you see here, this motion was here, it went like this, and now here it is again at the same point, it's going to repeat and so on. From that period, we can also define a quantity called the frequency, and the frequency is defined as f is one by tau. So the unit of tau would be second, and the unit of frequency would be one by second, or we frequently use hertz to denote this particular frequency. So we designate this motion by x of t, x as a function of t, and any periodic motion must satisfy xt equals xt plus tau. That means after time period tau, this motion will repeat. So we can write x as x is a sine 2 pi t by tau. So a is known as the amplitude of the motion, tau is the period and 2 pi t by tau is what is inside this sinusoidal function. So to simplify this, we define something known as the circular frequency, and that is given by the Greek letter here. And essentially comes out as 2 pi by tau. So using this, we can write x is a sine omega t. So this essentially represents the simple harmonic motion in its simplest form. Now here you can also see that the circular frequency can be written as 2 pi f because f is 1 by tau. So the unit of circular frequency is going to be radian per second. So radian per second is equal to 2 pi into frequency, which is given in hertz. So you can constantly move back and forth between hertz radian per second and also time period as you need to using these two formulas. So let us write down the fundamental equation for harmonic motion and then differentiate it once with respect to time and then differentiate it once more with respect to time. So x is displacement, x dot is velocity, x double dot is acceleration. And here we see that using trigonometry, this can be written back as sine of omega t plus pi by 2. And x double dot would be represented in terms of sine of omega t plus pi. So very interestingly, you see here that relative to the displacement, there is a phase change introduced here and a further phase change introduced here by taking x dot and x double dot. These are some fundamental aspects of simple harmonic motion.
so one more thing we can see is that if we take x and we take the second derivative we can see that this a sine omega t term is same as x therefore i can write x double dot equals negative of circular frequency square into x this again is a very critical equation which describes simple harmonic motion whenever you are asked a question to prove a motion is simple harmonic you essentially need to prove this equation for the given function x of t and if this holds, then you can say the motion is simple harmonic motion so let's look at one more way of displaying this motion that is sometimes done in terms of complex numbers so again we recall this equation here from trigonometry and complex numbers therefore we could also write the displacement in this form z is a e i into circular frequency into time and that would be a cos of circular frequency into time plus i a sine of circular frequency into time so this of course is a real part and this is the imaginary part so i can write this as a complex number so in this case z would be a complex sinusoid the complex sinusoid can be plotted so if you were to look at it at any point here on this circle the distance here would be the real part and the distance here would be the imaginary part and this would be the amplitude of this complex sinusoid now in some cases the complex sinusoid is preferred compared to using the real number representation and that is when phasing is required so one of the reasons why complex sinusoid is preferred is that many mathematical manipulations are more easy when you use these in a harmonic form so if you have two sinusoids here you have z1 is this you have z2 is this then it is much easier to perform multiplication division etc using these particular notations so we could take these two we could multiply these two and it would simply mean that a1 a2 would be multiplied and it would become e i theta 1 plus theta 2 similarly division would be much simpler here you would get i theta 1 minus theta 2 if you want to raise to the power that's also very simple both a and e are raised to the power n and similarly if you want to take the one by nth power that is also very simple you can simply create this here and it becomes one by n here and i theta by n here so there are many cases where you may use complex sinusoids to represent this kind of harmonic motion and in these cases it can become simpler so these are some very fundamental aspects in terms of vibration because we will see that periodic systems can be expressed in terms of harmonic motion harmonic motion essentially has one frequency we wrote it as x is a sine circular frequency t but typically you can also write it as a sine bracket circular frequency into t plus phi where phi is a phase and again if you differentiate that expression and you differentiate it once again so from displacement you would get velocity and the next derivative you could prove that is simple harmonic motion so what the complex sinusoid does is that it essentially captures both the magnitude and the phasing in a more simple form so this was a precursor to our next lecture where we are going to discuss about periodic motion.